Uh, hello everyone, I'm Jie Wen Yao. Today I will work with Samuel to present a TEIO related topic, making PCR device ready for confidential computing. In our previous talk, we have discussed how to support TEIO for the confidential container. We will focus, we focus on the host container side. In this talk, we will move the focus to the device to introduce what the device needs to do to support TEIO. Here is a legal page, and here's our agenda. We will brief talk about the challenge today, then move to the building block in the solution, then put things together. Today, we are seeing new platform architecture to support CPU workload offloading for better performance. For example, AR workload is offloaded to AR processor, graphic process to GPU, and we have smart NIC IPU to support network and infrastructure management. Today's confidential computing solution focuses on the host, host side, such as Intel TDX, AMD SCV, SMP, etc. What if we want to offload some of the confidential workload to a device? We are facing some challenges. For example, because the VMM is a resource manager is untrusted, how the VM, TVM communicate with the device? When TVM communicate device, how the TVM can ensure it's the right device the TVM can trust, not a malicious one. A platform may have multiple isolated TVM, and the platform may have multiple devices ready to accept the workload, how the TVM manages the, the, the devices. Since the device needs to be a trust boundary of the DE, what is the special requirement for those devices? In following, part, we will discard the building block from the industry to resolve those challenges. First is the TE device secure communication. Since VMM is untrusted, the communication between TVM and the device must be protected. One idea is to use a software mechanism. For example, we can reuse the network TIS to establish a session between TVM and device. This is similar to today's bounce buffer solution. However, since all communication data need to be encrypted by the software, there might be performance issue. A hardware mechanism is preferred. For example, the PCI SIG defined a link encryption solution. The figure in the right hand side shows the hardware solution. First, the TSM on the host side established a secure session with a device in, that is in SPDM, uh, uh, in SPDM message. The SPDM is a software communication mechanism, which is used to transport the management data only, but not the workload. By using SPDM protocol, the TSM and the DSM can use a IDE key management protocol to negotiate a set of IDE keys. Uh, the, the TSM and DSM can configure the encryption key for the device hardware, such as PCI root port. After those keys are configured, the ID keys are used for hardware encryption. The PCR transaction between the device and host SOC will be encrypted by the ID keys, and that is link encryption. Second, the TVM need a way to verify the device to ensure it's the right device, and this is uh, called TIO device attestation. The SPDM protocol defines a standard mechanism to allow the device to transport the device certificate chain and the device measurement to the host. The device certificate chain may include a, a root CA cert, intermediate cert, and the device cert. The device measurement may include the digest of the device ROM and firmware, hardware configuration, firmware configuration, version and secure version number, and device state, such as if the debug mode is enabled or not, if the recovery mode or not. The figure in the right hand side shows the whole picture for the device attestation. The whole side TSM acts as a tester to collect the device certificate and measurement and pass to the TVM. To verify the data, TVM need to get the endorsement from the endorser and the reference integrity manifest from a RIM provider and the payload policy from the policy provider. <coughs> For example, the endorser could be the device vendor or the OEM. The endorsement could be a root CA cert, which can be used to verify the device certificate chain. The device vendor can also provide the, the RIM 
uh, that is the expected device measurement. The TVM can compare the measurement collected from the TSM and with the measurement in the, in the rim. If the measurement matches, that means the device is expected. The measurement match just one example of the appraisal policy. In real world, the policy could be flexible. For example, the device may support firmware up, update. The appraisal policy can claim that I can trust the device as long as the SCVN is the latest one. Then the TVN just to compare the SCVN collect from the device with the SVN providing the RIM. The rest measurement, such as digest of the firmware, can be ignored. Now let's see how TVM manages the TIO device. The PCI-6 defines the TDIS protocol, stand for a TEE device interface security protocol. The TVM and the VMM can use the TDIS protocol to communicate with the DSM to manage a portion of the device, that is TDI. The TDIS message is a management message. As such, it is protected by the SPDM session. For example, the VMM can send the TDS message lock interface, then the DSM can lock down the TDI configuration and change state to locked. The TVM can send the TDS message start device interface, then the DSM should change the TDI state to run, then the TDI can start to process the trusted MMIO and the trust DMA. Note the trusted MMIO and trust DMA are key messages protecting IDETRP. The device ITDI is an assignable portion of the device. It's a logical component. For example, it could be the whole physical device. Then the whole physical device is management by the TVM. The TDI could be a device physical function and the TVM owns those specific physical device function. And the TDI could be a device virtual function, such as in single root IOV mode. Then the TVM owns just the virtual function. The device vendor needs to determine which mode the device can support. Finally, the TIO device has some special requirement to find the TDS. Here we list some most important ones. For the full requirement, please refer to the TC spec. For example, the device TCB for TE is a DSM and the hardware, and the DSM acts as a security policy enforcer. The DSM needs to support the SPDM secure session to communicate with the host side DSM. The DSM should support function isolation, for example, the isolation between the TDIs. The DSM should support resource isolation to ensure no res private resource can be accessed by the two TDIs. The DSM should support resource lock. Once the host sends lock interface, no configuration change can be done for the TDI. The device root of trust will take the responsibility to manage the mutual firmware. For example, in order to support device attestation, the device IoT should define the root of trust for measurement, storage, and reporting. The IoT needs to ensure that no one can forge the device measurement. Also, the IoT needs to support the residents, for example, secure boot, secure firmware update, and recovery. This SP800-193 provides the guidance for the platform firmware residents, and the concept is also applicable for the device firmware. Now let's put things together. Uh, this figure shows the device software stack on the right hand side. Uh, on the bottom, the device has a PCI root port to support ID link encryption. The device either implement a PCI DOE mailbox to listen the messages sent from the host. Once the DOE listener gets a request message, it will send the protocol layer for dispatch. The DOE layer will remove the DOE header and hand to the SPDM layer. If it is a standard SPDM message, then the SPDM stack will send the response back, such as SPDM get device certificate or get device measurement. If it is a, a, a vendor defined message, then the SPDM stack will dispatch to application layer, which could be IDE management message or TDS message. Then the ID key management message will maintain the ID 
for the PCIe port, and the TDS stack will maintain the TDI state, for the device TDI. According to the spec, each TDI has a full state. The initial state calls config unlocked. Anyone can touch a TDI to the initial configuration. Once the configuration is down, the host sends lock interface command to the to, to change the TDI to config lock state. In this state, no more configuration change is allowed by the device. The TDI T TVM is expected to collect the device configuration information and does verification to determine if the TVM can accept the TDI. If the TVM decides to accept, then the TVM needs to send start interface to change the TDI to run state. Once the device is in run state, then the T TDI can process the trusted MMIO and the trusted DMA in ID encryption TLP. If there's any error happened after the TDI is locked, then the TDI will move to the error state and no more trusted MMIO and DMA in that state. Finally, this is a typical flow for TEIO device setup. First, the host needs to send the SPDM message to establish a SPDM secure session and collect the device certificate and measurement information. Then the host needs to use an IDE key management to set up an IDE key for the device to support link encryption. Later, the TVM needs to verify the device and accept the TDI assignment by sending this message to start the device interface. And here is a list of standard guidance for the TIO device vendor you need to follow, such as DMTF, SPDM, uh, PCI-SIC, DOE, CMA, IDE, TDISP, etc. If the DICE device, then the DICE specification should be followed. NIST provides some good guidance for that. That should be taken care of. And Intel recently announced the, the T, T, TDS Connect, and we published the TIO device guide and the device attestation model document. As summary, in order to build a TIO device, the device hardware needs to support IDE or secure communication. The, the device firmware needs to support SPDM for device attestation and the secure channel establishment. And the device firmware needs to support TDS message for interface management. And that is all for our talk. And please ask if there's any questions.